So before we're actually able to move into solving differential equations with Laplace transforms, we need to know how are we going to handle derivatives of functions, because when we're solving differential equations, obviously we have uh, possibly many orders of derivatives. So the idea here is I've just set up right now, uh, we're trying to take the Laplace transform of the derivative of some function f of t, and I've just used the integral definition and set it up. So we have the integral from 0 to infinity e to the minus st times whatever we're trying to take the Laplace transform of, which here happens to be the derivative f prime of t. So I'm actually going to do this integral by parts. So I'm going to think of e to the minus st as one part, and we'll think of our f prime of t dt as the other part. So in this instance, u is going to be my e to the minus st. The reason for that is because we integrate dv in terms of when we do by parts, and obviously it's easy to integrate f prime of t. We know we should get back some sort of expression involving the original function, which is going to be convenient for us. So we'll go ahead and set that up. So that's u, that's dv. We'll go ahead and make a note here. So du would then be negative s e to the minus st dt. And for what we're doing here, we said v was just going to be f of t, if dv is f prime of t dt. So we go ahead and use all of that information, and we do the integration by parts. So I'm going to go ahead and keep my left-hand side of the equation here. So my Laplace transform of f prime of t, the derivative of some function then, is going to be so u times v, which would be e to the minus st times f of t. And now remember, this is a definite integral, so we want to go ahead and say, well, we would evaluate this from, we'll just say, 0 to infinity there minus the integral of v du. I'm going to go ahead and, so v du, I'm going to go ahead and write that as negative s e to the minus st, and then I'll go ahead and put the f of t at the end, but it's still v du dt there. Okay, so now if you think about what we're going to do here, I would just go ahead and I would combine this negative and this negative. So that would give us, and I'll actually, maybe I'll rewrite this expression in here. So the expression in there would actually be, we could think of it as f of t over e to the st. Maybe that makes sense. And evaluate that from 0 to infinity. So minus negative would give us plus. And I'm going to go ahead and bump out the s, because if we're integrating dt, then s is technically a constant, so s integral e to the minus st f of t dt. Okay, and so a couple of things are going to happen here. If we look at the first half of this, um, if we think about plugging in here, we plug in these bounds, we have infinity, we have zero. So if you think about if we plug in some dummy variable and let it go to infinity, remember we said that one requirement for f of t was that it be of uh, exponential growth or less, right? Generally less than exponential type of growth or some multiple of that. So we look at um, the expression going to infinity and so the exponential growth on the bottom would be greater than the growth on the top. So when we plug in this infinite bound, the first thing we're going to get is zero. And then we will have minus whatever we get when we plug in 0, so we would plug in 0 for t, so we'd get f of 0 over e to the 0, right? All right, plus s, and now if you look at this integral, I guess technically, let me go ahead and make sure and say that's from 0 to infinity still. This whole integral here is actually our exact definition for the Laplace transform of the original function, right? So actually this right here is s times the Laplace transform of f of t, if you just notice that definition is right there for us. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and just simplify this a little bit here. So this idea we have 0 minus, so e to the 0 is really 1, right? So we get negative f of 0 there, and here we get s. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my Laplace transform as our new function 
f of s, right? When we take the Laplace transform of a function of t, we get a function of s. Uh, so we can go ahead and then say, so the Laplace transform of f prime of t is going to be equal to, I'm going to rearrange it and just write s times capital F of s minus f of 0. Okay, so we get an expression for the Laplace transform for the derivative of a function there. Okay, so we could work out several more. It would get a more and more lengthy procedure, I think, to do that. So maybe we'll just kind of explain what the pattern is as we do this. So the idea is you would still end up uh, integrating by parts, and if you're doing a higher order derivative, um, you would either uh, basically do repeated integration by parts, or you would get some sort of a recursion formula where you have the second derivative is related to the first derivative, which is related to the function, similar to what we got before. So he said, I guess, we'll go ahead and just make a note. So our Laplace transform of the first derivative. So when we have the first derivative, we said that was a single power of s times f of s minus f of 0. Okay, for our Laplace transform of the second derivative, then we're going to actually get, and you'll start to see a pattern maybe develop here. So we'll get s squared times f of s minus, and then our power is going to go down by 1 for s, so we're going to get s times f of 0, and then minus, and then the power of s goes down again, and we're actually going to increase the order of derivative by 1 there. So we get minus f prime of 0. We'll write a couple more down. So the Laplace transform of f triple prime of t then is going to be s cubed times f of s minus, so now we decrease the power of s by 1, so we get s square times f of 0 minus decrease the power of s again, so we get s increase the derivative order by 1, so we get times f prime of 0 and then minus if we decrease the power of s and increase the order of derivative, that will give us f double prime of 0. So you can kind of see the pattern of what's going on. We start with a certain order of the derivative. We start with that power of s times f of s, the original Laplace transform of the original function, and then we basically get this pattern where the powers of s decrease. We go from f of s to f of 0, and then we simply increase there. So for example, if we had the Laplace transform of the, let's go ahead and say, we wouldn't do this very often, but just make sure we've got the pattern. Let's say the sixth order derivative of f, so the sixth derivative, so we'll take up a couple lines here, so that would be s to the six f of s minus s to the five f of zero minus s to the 4, f prime of 0, continuing the pattern, minus s cubed, f double prime of 0, minus s square, f triple prime of 0, minus s times the fourth derivative at 0, minus, and then we're out of s's, so we just say the fifth derivative at zero, for instance. Okay, so you can kind of see the pattern there, hopefully. The idea is we start with the highest power of s. You'll notice we end up with one less power, one less order derivative than we started with before we did the Laplace transform. So you notice in f triple prime, the highest power derivative we have is f double prime. Here with the sixth order derivative, we end up with a fifth derivative of f at 0. Okay, so just a sneak preview of the next video looking at how we might start solving differential equations. Now here I've just used f primes uh, instead of what we usually see as y primes, but we'll just go ahead 
of this idea here. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at just taking the Laplace transform of each of these. This is not an actual problem we would solve. We don't have any initial conditions. We're not going to work through it, but just sort of setting up how we would apply uh, what we did with these derivatives to what we're going to do with differential equations. So remember we said that the Laplace transform of f of t, we're just going to go ahead and call that f, capital F of s. Okay, and then we said before, we said that the Laplace transform of f prime of t was going to be s times f of s minus f of zero. And then we said the Laplace transform of the second derivative, according to the pattern we just did, would be s square f of s minus s f of zero minus f prime of zero. And I'll just go ahead and include here what we already figured out from the first video. We're going to need to take the Laplace transform of the other side as well. And in an earlier video, we found that the Laplace transform of one happened to be one over s. So we'll go ahead and use this idea as well. So if we look at the Laplace transform of every piece of information here, so first f double prime is going to be this expression here. So we will start with s square f of s minus s f of zero minus f prime of zero for our second derivative minus two times f prime, so I'll go ahead and take this information and put it in for f prime, two times s f of s minus f of zero plus f, so f here is just the Laplace transform of little f would make f of s there equal to, and then on the other side of the equation the Laplace transform of one we found in an earlier video was one over s. So you can take our word for it there. All right, so that's how we would start, and then we would certainly combine everything that we need to algebraically and start doing some solving. Basically, we're going to start doing some solving for f of s, is what we'll attempt to do. And then we will, uh, in the next video, show you how to solve that, which shouldn't be too bad. And then we want to look at taking the inverse transform and get back to an expression for the solution to our differential equation.